Hi and welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is about the zeros of a quadratic function. You might also refer to it as the x-intercepts. We have two goals for today. The first is to determine the number of zeros the quadratic relation has using a variety of methods. The second, determine an unknown value in a quadratic function. A quadratic function can have zero, one, or two roots. In this first case that I'm going to draw, it has zero roots. If we have zero roots, that would be a quadratic function that looks something like this. Remember, a root is a number, another word for an x-intercept. So zero root simply means that it never crosses the x-axis. It can cross the y-axis. That's fine. So I guess we could also have an example of something like this. But it can never cross the x-axis. One root has its vertex directly on the x-axis. So an example might look something like this or something like this. The third case that we have is if we have two roots. And for two roots, that would be our classic, my parabola crosses the x-axis twice, there and there, for example. Or maybe something like this. If we have a minimum across the x-axis, perhaps there and there. Now, just take careful note of the a value in each one of these cases. Um, and, and the fact that A is negative if it opens down and A is positive if it opens up. So let's go down and look at uh, our first goal specifically, and that is determine the number of zeros that a quadratic relation has using a variety of methods. The first method we'll look at here is the method of determining the vertex and the value of A. That should be pretty intuitive to us as we've looked at the examples above on, on the graph. Well, how does this work? If I asked you, for example, to determine the number of roots of f of x equals negative 5 x plus 3 all squared minus 2. Well, we know that this is in the general form of a parabola in vertex form, so we know that the vertex is equal to negative 3, negative 2. That means it is below the x-axis. We also know that the a value is negative 5, which means that it opens down. And if you look at where have we seen this um, in the pictures above, well, where do we have something that's below the x-axis and it opens down? It's this example right here. And we can see there that has to be having no roots or no zeros. So that's the first way. The second way we can go ahead and determine the number of zeros is we can do that by factoring, something we've done a lot with quadratics. So for example, if you had a question that said, uh, find the number of roots, again, the question is the same in every case, but I'm going to give you a slightly different equation in each case. Determine the number of roots. And we're given f of x is equal to 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. Well, I hope by now that you can recognize that's at a perfect square. I quickly look at the first term. Well, that's perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. 2 times the square root of the first term is 2 times 2x. The square root of the last term is 5. And that 2 times 2x times 5 gives me 20x. So that is a perfect square. So I'm just going to write that as a perfect square here. 2x plus 2 times 2x. And we'll write that last bit in a minute. 5 squared. So that's going to be 5. So what that means is that's going to be 2x plus 5 all squared. Well, how many roots does that have? Well, because that only gives us one factor times itself, that means there's only one root or one zero. And that's because there's only one x value. 
If we'd factored it and gotten two factors, we would have found that that would have given us two roots. If it's unfactorable, that might be an indication that it has no roots. But we also know we have the quadratic formula to confirm for sure it has no roots. A third method that we can use is we can calculate something called the discriminant. We don't discriminate in math, but we do discriminate. So what that means is if we take that quadratic equation that we're very familiar with, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and we specifically look at this value that's added and subtracted to the negative b over 2a, we notice that this, if this is positive, it has roots. If this is negative, it does not have roots. So the discriminant is specifically this b squared minus 4ac part of it. We usually label the discriminant with a capital D. You might want to just keep that with a box around it as a nice highlight for you to remember what the discriminant is. Now I already noted the fact that if the value of b squared minus 4ac is negative, so therefore it would be less than zero. Then the number of zeros, or the number of roots, has to be zero. If the value of the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, well then you just have the negative b plus minus under the square root zero. You're adding zero to that, which is going to give you one root because you're just going to be left with negative b over 2a as your x value. In the final case, if you have the discriminant to be greater than 0, as we often found in grade 10, that gave us two roots. Now that's a very simple, quick way to do that without having to use the whole quadratic formula, if we're just trying to determine the number of roots. If we were actually to trying to determine what the roots are, we'd have to factor it, or we'd have to actually use a quadratic formula if it's unfactorable. So let's look at an example for this. Let's say that you are asked to find the number of zeros. And the equation you were given is f of x equals 3.2 x squared minus 2.1 x plus 1.8. Now, if you were, again, trying to determine what the zeros were, you'd use the quadratic formula. But all we need to know is the number of zeros. That's all it's asking us. So we quickly pull out the equation for the discriminant, and we substitute those values in. B is negative 2.1 minus 4 times 3.2 times 1.8. Gives us 4.8. That's equal to negative 18.63, which is less than 0. So therefore, it has no roots. Or we'll, we could actually say it has no real roots. As you go on in mathematics, if you take um, grade 12 advanced functions, or if you take any university level courses, you'll talk about imaginary numbers, which actually, believe it or not, have real applications when you're talking about the quantum world of physics. This brings us to our second goal for today, and that is to determine the value of an unknown in a quadratic function. Here's an example. Suppose that you, ask, you were asked to determine the value, determine the value of k such that f of x is equal to kx squared minus 4x plus k has one root. What would you do? Well, again, it has to do with the discriminant. If f of x only has one root, then we know that the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is equal to 0. So a is, has to be equal to k, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to k. 
That doesn't seem to help us initially, but watch what happens. If I set this up, I get b squared with negative 4 all squared minus 4 times k times k is equal to 0. So what I get here is I get 16 minus 4k squared is equal to 0. So yes, I have another quadratic formula here that I need to solve, but this is going to allow us to find what the k value actually is. We need to isolate k to solve it. If I add 4k to both 4k squared to both sides, I get 4k squared is equal to 16. I then divide by 4, and I find that k squared is equal to 4. Remember, in every time that we take a square root within an equation like this now, we have to take the positive and negative root. So we take plus or minus square root 4 to get k by itself. So k is therefore going to be positive 2 and negative 2. Those are the two possibilities for k. So we could say, therefore, the value of k is 2 or negative 2 if f of x has only one root.